All right, guys. How you going? Um, <laughs> I'm good. And we're back for part two of our Flappy Fish tutorial. Um, last time, in the last video, obviously, we uh, made our fish jump a bit, which is really cool. Um, it was a very simple start, but we're going to get straight back into it. He's jumping. Hmm. Hi guys, welcome back to the tutorial. Uh, in this in the second part of the video. Hi guys, welcome back to the tutorial. Uh, in part two of this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is uh, fixing up our fish because uh, we made him jump in the first part, but the jump um, isn't quite accurate just yet because he sort of fights against gravity. We don't want that. Now you'll notice in Flappy Bird in the actual game uh, when you tap the button or if you click on the screen, he jumps pretty much straight away. You don't have to press it multiple times for him to jump correctly. So the way that we do that uh, is we'll click on our fish game object. We'll go down to the script that we wrote, fish control. And if you right click on this and go edit script, this should bring up monodevelop. And we'll add a line of code in that uh, cancels out any gravity that might be affecting him at the exact moment that we go tell him to jump. And the way that you do that is you'd type in RB to work with the rigid body component again that we set up in the last video. We'll say uh, velocity uh, equals vector two dot zero. And we'll save that. So what that means is our velocity is how fast an object is traveling um, at, at a time. And we want to set that to zero. So when we press the space bar, We'll take his rigid body, which is how he's moving physically. We want to take how fast he's moving and set that to be zero. And then we tell him to jump. And what that means is if we go back to our game and we press play, we should have a much more accurate jump. Kind of like, there we go. That's much better. See, no matter how fast he's falling, he jumps straight away, which is what we want. Because that's, uh, that's how Flappy Bird works. Um, the next thing you need to do is add a collider. I've actually already done that, um, but I'll show you how to do it again. Um, a collider is basically a, a component. These Remember, these are components, and these are game objects. A component is just something that we attach to a game object to give it a shape, uh, a physical shape, that is. So when two objects bounce or hit, in, hit each other, if they move towards each other and collide, um, the collider which is what we're about to add, is just the shape that that object has when they bounce. Because um, it might be a bit complicated to have our, our game object have a shape exactly like how it looks. Usually you give it a more simple shape, like uh, in this case we'll probably go with a circle. Um, if you had like a tank, that might just be a square. Uh, if you had a tree, that might just be a square. You don't always want to use the exact shape because it can be a bit, um, a bit hard for computers to be compu uh, computing that sort of stuff all the time. So if we go down to add component and type in circle collider 2D, or just circle, it should come up. And you'll notice now there's a green circle around our fish. Um, you can play, you'll notice it comes up uh, in the list of components on the side here. You should be able to play with those values a bit, um, just to get it right. We basically want him it to be just around the yellow part of his body, which is roughly sort of about there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but you can make it as accurate as you want, really. About that looks pretty good. Cool. Alright, so now our fish has a collider. Um, and that means that when he hits something, uh, we can start doing some instructions based on what he's hit and where he hits it. Um, the main thing that we need next is ground for our game so that he's got something to collide with. There's a lot of ways you can make ground, um, but the way I'm going to do it, oops, the way I'm going to do that is go 3D object, and go quad. And all a quad is, really, it's just a square. It's just a 2D square. You can rotate it. You notice that it doesn't have a back to it. It's just a square. These are really good for 2D games because you can make, um, they're good for floors. Um, you can attach a, a picture to them and you can make it, um, yeah, you can sort of make it whatever you want. We don't want a mesh collider on it. 
we want to get rid of this because we need to have a 2D collider and a mesh collider is a 3D game. So we'll right click on this and go remove component. And we'll go down to add component and type in box collider or just box and you'll see you've got some options here. We want box collider 2D. Um, there's a great reason for this um, why we use 2D colliders but it's probably a bit, uh, it's a bit much to explain at the moment. So I might explain that in a later video. But for now we just want to make sure we've got a quad which we get from that uh, this list here and we add a box collider 2D to it. Now you can stretch it out using uh, the X scale. You can just click and drag on that or you can type it in if you want. Um, basically it just needs to fill up the screen so about 20 should do that. If you've got a really big monitor you might need to make it 30 or something like that. Um, and we'll give it a name. At the moment it's still going to be called quad so we'll call this ground. Um, I think we also want to give it a tag. A tag is basically, um, it's a little, uh, it's just a word. It's it's just a word that we can use to make sure that, um, how best do I put this? Uh, I think we also want to give it a tag. Uh, and a tag is basically just a word that you can attach to a game object so that we can um, classify it a bit better. It's kind of hard to explain, but you'll see how we use it um, in a moment. So for now, maybe just go click on your ground, click on the tag uh, drop down list up here, and click add tag. And you click this little plus button to create a new one. And that should say new tag. And if you highlight that and press backspace, <laughs> it disappears. Okay, maybe we just want to highlight that and go solid. And that's basically, uh, that's the code word we're going to use for anything that the fish will die when it collides with. So anytime the fish hits something that's tagged solid, we'll say that counts as game over and the fish disappears and stuff like that. Um, oh, by the way, if you run the game now, you'll notice that uh, the fish bounces or it just hits the ground and it just stops now. That's because our ground has a collider. If you remove, while the game's running, if you remove component, notice he falls through. So that's just a good, uh, good way of showing you what a collider is actually doing. Um, all right, cool. Now that we've got a ground that's tagged solid, I think what we'll do is make our fish, uh, we'll make him explode or disappear. We'll make him disappear for now when he hits, uh, hits something solid. So the way you check if an object is hitting another object, you make a new, remember these parts are called functions. Anything that starts with void and has some brackets like that at the end of it, uh, that's a function. So what we'll do is we'll say void. We'll make it make make sure you've got enough uh, space down the bottom here, just above the last bracket. We'll say void on collision enter 2D. Then you open up your nine and zero brackets, and inside that we'll say collision 2D hover. And then at the end of that, you put the little curly brackets. So this event, uh, this is built into Unity, and it um, it'll handle objects hitting each other for us. So we don't need to do too much. Basically, this is going to happen anytime this object, which is our fish, hits something else. So what we want to check is if other, in this case, other is the thing that we're hitting. So basically, um, when the fish hits something. Whatever it hits, that's going to be called other. So if other dot transform dot tag, which is how you access the tag component, equals solid, and we close our brackets, put some curly brackets in. Now anything we do inside here is going to happen if the fish hits something considered solid. Um, what we're going to say is destroy, which is going to delete something, and we'll open up a bracket and say this. Uh, this, is a cool, this is a cool word. Um, what it means is whatever component the word is typed in. So in this case, this means fish control. But we don't want to just destroy the fish control component. We want to destroy the whole game object, like the whole fish. So you'd say this dot game object. Now, uh, make sure to put the semicolon at the end. It's very important. And go up to file and go save. 
still get all our changes that's been uh, saved. Ooh, got a problem here. Uh, if you get red text down here at the bottom here, that's means you've got an error. If not, I'm pressing you can play it string to bool. Hmm. If you uh, if you get an error down the bottom, you can double click it and it'll take you to the problem in modern develop. It'll highlight the line for you. If uh, so, we've got if other dot transform dot tag equals solid. That's pretty interesting. I wonder if we say equals equals. That's better. Okay, so that was my mistake. Um, we want to have two equal signs right now. Um, that's for comparing uh, words, which um, Unity just got a bit confused by what we were trying to do, and so did I. So now if we run the game, you'll notice the fish disappears the second it hits the ground, uh, which is basically, uh, you know, this is this <laughs> you're halfway to Flappy Bird already, really, because you've got to jump and not hit the ground, or you die. Cool. Uh, so the next thing we want to make besides that is uh, we can give it a, our texture. So I've already drawn up some graphics for us here. If we go to the ground and we, I wonder if we can just drag that straight onto it. Mm, no, we can't. Um, if we go, if we right click uh, in our assets folder, which is where all our stuff is, if we right click and create a material, we'll call this um, ground grass. Um, now if we go to, this is a weird word, albedo, it basically means um, uh, a texture, which just lets us put a picture in. You'll see you'll see what happens when, when we do this. Uh, if we go grass ground and we drag that onto the ground. Hmm, do we drag that? Maybe this is why. Okay, if we click on the ground, and we go to our mesh renderer, and we go materials, size 1, Click on element zero and select grass ground. That's better. It's getting a bit confused there. Um, so it looks like it's worked. We've got some green ground in here, but it's really dark. I think that's because it's looking for lighting, which we don't have. And we don't really need. So if you go to shader, if you click on, uh, make sure you've got your ground selected, and then you go right down the bottom, you should see ground grass, shader standard. If we click on that and go unlit, texture, that's better. Now it's not going to look for any lighting. Um, so there we go. Um, we've basically got, um, we added in some ground and we checked for a collision. We put some colliders on our objects so that they know when they're colliding with each other. Um, and we fixed up our fish's jump so that it's more accurate to the original mobile game. Uh, in the next video, we'll add in, um, we might make an object that tracks whether our fish has died or if the game's running. And we'll do a bit more programming heavy stuff. Alright, see you in the next video.